In this example, we're going to do some more two sample tests. Okay. And let's see, we have a study to see if taking calcium reduces blood pressure. Two independent groups were chosen. One group was given calcium and one group was given a placebo. The decrease in their blood pressure was recorded. We want to conduct hypothesis tests to see if taking calcium reduced blood pressure by more than one point. So this would be an example if you have something where you're like, okay, it's not really worth going out of your way to do something unless it's going to decrease it by at least one point. So you don't just want to see a difference, you want to see a difference of at least so much. Okay. And so in this case, you would say we want to know is the mean if you take calcium going to be well bigger than the mean if you take a placebo by at least one. And the way that you write that is you say if you take the mean of calcium and you minus the mean of the placebo that should be bigger than one. So we have our two groups. We have group one and group two. We have our calcium placebo treatments. Sample size, sample mean, sample standard deviation. Notice that this is giving you an S, not S squared like we've kind of gotten used to with some of our other two sample tests. So let's kind of go through and look at normal things we'd look at. So these two box plots, the inner quartile range is a bit different, but the overall range is about the same. If you look at your standard deviations like 8.7 and 5.9, those seem fairly close. These aren't horribly different, so I might say we could use the equal variance approach. Maybe. I'm not quite sure, which is probably why in part one I say use the equal variance approach, and in part two I say use the unequal variance approach. So we're going to try both just to kind of see what would happen here, because I'm not quite sure if those variances would be about the same or not. Let's see, if I look at these two normal quantile plots, they're, I mean, they're kind of curved, but they're not horribly uncurved. They're kind of right there on the border. Let's just say that both are normal enough. Because remember, the t-test is really robust. Unless it's obviously really, really curved, you're going to be okay. Our null hypothesis and alternative so our alternative is we're hoping to show that the mean for calcium is at least one higher than the mean for the placebo, which we write like this. So the null is always the same, but you just put an equal. So it would be that the mean difference equals one. Okay. And let's just choose alpha equals 0.05. So we have everything set up. Now let's use our equal variance approach. So we do have sample standard deviation which means that has to be a t-test, and then you just have to choose if it's equal variance or unequal variance. So let's try equal variance. Okay, your t-test statistic by default is the difference in the means minus this delta, okay, over the square root of our pooled variance times 1 over n plus 1 over m. Okay, now this delta means the difference that you're suspecting. So coming over your null hypothesis, whatever number is right there, that's your delta. Usually we just say it's zero and we don't have to worry about it, but in this case we actually do have a delta. Now I was really nice here and I calculated SP for you, so we don't need to go ahead and do that just because it takes time. Let's see, so our sample means are 5. Remember we're doing calcium first because that's what we wrote first over here, so calcium first. We'll do 5 minus the negative 0.64 minus our delta, our hypothesized difference, which is 1. Square root, we have our pooled standard deviation here is 7.372, and we just need to square it, so it matches here squared. 1 over sample size for calcium is 10, sample size for placebo is 11. And if I put this in, I get 1.44 and degrees of freedom is n plus m minus 2. Maybe you have different degrees of freedom for your equal variances versus unequal variances. So it's 10 plus 11 for our two sample sizes minus 2 which is 19. So 
here's my 1.44. Look at your alternative, that's a greater than sign, so we want the area to the right. With 19 degrees of freedom. Zoom out a little bit. Use it from the last one. You're looking for 1.44, which puts us about here, so my p-value between 0.05 and 0.1. My p-value is between 0.05 and 0.1. If I use a calculator, my exact p-value is 0.0832. Now that we've tried that one, let's try it now with unequal variance approach. And I was nice and calculated the degrees of freedom because that's also very difficult to calculate and takes a while. So unequal degrees of freedom says you do the difference in the sample means, minus again that delta your hypothesized difference in the population means, over the stand the variance for x squared over n, sample size for x and the variance for y over its sample size. So really you just make sure you put all the numbers in the right spots. So the sample means are 5 and negative 0.64 and these are the standard deviations and we'll need to make sure we square them because we really wanted variances. Okay, so for x, or our calcium, because we're doing calcium first, our thing was 5 minus our negative 0.64. Our hypothesized mean is 1, that's the number there in that null hypothesis and square each of those foundations, make sure you do the calcium first, since that's what we're doing first, so 8.743 squared over its sample size, and 5.901 squared over its sample size of 11. So this gives me 1.41. And I told you to use degrees of freedom, is 15.591. And we'll round, we always round down, so we'll round to 15. Okay, so here's my t is 1.41. We want the area to the right. So now 15 degrees of freedom, 1.41, puts us in the same spot. So my p value is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. The exact value is 0.08. 9, 1. So let's compare our two approaches. So once again, we weren't quite sure if those variances were the same or not. They were just kind of there on the border. You'll find that if they are the same, then these two approaches will give very similar results. So our T statistics were very similar. Degrees of freedom, fairly close, not exactly the same, but the p-values, 0 0.0832, 0 0.0891, very, very close. So let's go ahead and write our conclusions. So, both methods give a p-value between 0.05 and 0.1. In either case, this is bigger than alpha equals 0.05 that we're using. So this is a big p-value, and so we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, which means basically, then that we're going to have no evidence that the mean for calcium minus the mean for the placebo is greater than one. So no evidence. Well, I guess I'll actually type it out as my actual sentence. So no evidence that the average for all the patients on the calcium was at least one higher than the mean for the placebo population.